people with low fat free mass have an increased risk for dying earlier. Uh, just as people with high levels of fat mass have an increased risk of, of dying earlier. And so um, muscle is kind of the overlooked side of the, the mortality picture where you truly need to maintain a healthy amount of muscle mass in order to live a long, vigorous life. The way muscle exists, it, 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 there's this dynamic cycle of muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown. So muscle protein synthesis is essentially the incorporation of muscle proteins in, into skeletal muscle tissue. And muscle protein breakdown is, I guess you could consider the, the leaving or, or the disappearing or oxidizing or excreting of um, muscle proteins from the tissue. And so there is the incorporation of it and then there's the, in quotes, disappearance of it going on on this dynamic cycle throughout the course of the day. Mm -hmm. And so when these two sides of the equation, if you will, muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown are occurring at an even rate, then muscle mass stays the same. And so if somebody wants to, for example, gain muscle, then the goal would be to have muscle protein synthesis outpace muscle protein breakdown on a long-term chronic basis and then over time muscle growth can occur and by the same token if somebody wants to prevent muscle loss then there cannot be an outpacing of the muscle protein breakdown side of the equation and so that's kind of the essence of why of what muscle protein synthesis is and why it's important and that it is part of this cycle of synthesis and breakdown that goes on 24 7. So we need to have greater amount of synthesis then break down then if break we down. want to see muscle growth. Okay, but w what about if we just want to maintain homeostasis? Mm. Would you have to just equal them out? They're, yeah, they're, they're even. So anytime you are in a fasting state, muscle protein breakdown will tend to be higher. And anytime you're in a fed state, then muscle protein synthesis will, will tend to be elevated. And so um, this is why when you look at um, the intermittent fasting um, protocols, the, the variants of intermittent fasting, the ones that involve long periods of time of not eating anything at all, even consecutive days, then you're looking at threats to skeletal muscle mass because then you have a higher element of muscle protein breakdown rather than synthesis. And so that's kind of one example of how that would work. It seems so simple when you say it, but I think even in 2024, it seems like the hardest thing. You know, you're just like, you know, make sure that muscle protein synthesis outpaces breakdown. It's like, okay, that's cool. That's simple. Mm -hmm. But yet we still find it difficult, especially me as a woman. It's a, it's not as easy as what you just say to outpace that. Yeah. So is that the only way to, so muscle protein synthesis, which I'm guessing is through what we eat, the protein that we eat, which we'll get into. That's not the only way to stimulate muscle mass. We can also do it through resistance training. Yeah, that's right. I, ideally you would have both in place. You would have the nutrition supporting the resistance training and there's a whole art and science to how to structure nutrition so that it optimally supports the progressive resistance training program. Because resistance training will, um, it, it's an essential component of mm. muscle growth. Um, there are limits to just how much lean tissue and, and muscle tissue specifically that you can grow just by getting the nutrition right, but not training. <laughs> so, And what is that um, growth? Well, right. that, that growth would come from, it would happen to a certain point. So if somebody is coming from a place of malnutrition or undernutrition, you can get them to a safe level to just survive. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're looking at adding healthy and protective amounts of muscle tissue or muscle tissue that would facilitate greater strength than just normal activities of daily living. If somebody wanted to become athletic, for example, then there would need to be a relatively formal resistance training element in order to, for the body to have a reason to use that raw material to build the new tissue and adapt to the stresses that you're imposing on it. Mm. So, so yeah, you can't just optimize your protein and your calories and expect to continually grow muscle there are limits to just how much lean tissue and, and muscle tissue specifically that you can grow 
just by getting the nutrition right, but not training. <laughs> so, and what is that um, growth? Well, right. that that growth would come from it would happen to a certain point. So, if somebody is coming from a place of malnutrition or undernutrition, you can get them to a safe level to just survive. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're looking at adding healthy and protective amounts of muscle tissue or muscle tissue that would facilitate greater strength than just normal activities of daily living. If somebody wanted to become athletic, for example, then there would need to be a relatively formal resistance training element in order to, for the body to have a reason to use that raw material to build the new tissue and adapt to the stresses that you're imposing on it. Mm. So, so yeah, you can't just optimize your protein and your calories and expect to continually grow muscle. Yeah. For some people, that's actually a better program than what they were doing when they were eating hamburgers, pizza, fries, ice cream. Correct. And 4,000 calories a day of it while sitting around. So now they're carnivore and they're training and they're, at least their body composition is improving, but they're still not optimizing. 